In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the ruler and a few other things that are associated with it. Up to this point, we've been talking about the LCD and a little bit of bars and beats. I now want to go a little bit deeper, explaining how the bars, beats, divisions, and ticks translate to the ruler. So if we look at the LCD, we are now in 4-4 time. And our playhead is currently at bar 2. And you can see bar 2 up on top of the ruler. Since we're in 4-4, four, four, there are four quarter notes within a bar. And that is referred to as beats in logic. So looking at the ruler, here's beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, and beat 4. So these numbers on the ruler show the beats and correspond to the beats within the LCD. Now within a beat, there are four sixteenth notes, and these are called divisions in logic. And you can look here, one, and we see one on the division, two, and three, four, and back to beat two, division one. Within a division, there is 240 ticks. So in one sixteenth note, there is 240 ticks. If we were to break that in half, that would be 120, which would be considered a 30-second note. So let's bring it back and take a look here. It's a 121 ticks. It started on tick 1, and that's why you have the extra tick on 121. Next, we're going to take a look at time. So let's uh, go to View and add our secondary ruler. Now when you look at our ruler, it has time added to it. Let's uh, change our LCD to also look at time. Now looking at the LCD, it matches the ruler up on top with the time. It has one hour in the front, which is a really good habit to have if you're syncing up other projects or working with TV film a lot. We're not going to be working on uh, syncing anything up in this class, so I'm going to change this to just normal time. To do that, we need to go to File, Project Settings, and then Synchronization. And that brings up this window. We want to look here. This is where the time offset is. And you click and drag it down to change it to zero. Now if we look at our ruler, that makes it a lot easier to read there and on the LCD. And we have a project coming up where we have to have a time that is exactly 29.5 seconds long. And I'm going to click this, delete, add 29, use the arrows, move over, and I'm going to make this 29.5 and enter. And now the playhead is at exactly 29.5 seconds. Next thing I want to show with rulers is adding markers. We need to go over here to this flag and click that, and a new area comes up below our bars for markers. Now the number 29.5 seconds is going to be a very important number for our next project. So let's add a marker to mark that spot. To name this marker, we need to double click it. And then we can name it 29.5, or we can just call it end. Now we have a marker to mark where that 29.5 second spot is. And if we want to put our playhead there now, all we have to do is bring it close by and it automatically sticks to that 29.5 seconds. Since we're on the markers, let's add a few more. Let's bring it to the top and you can hit this plus sign or you can hit option apostrophe which adds a new marker. Again, we double click it, and let's uh, name this start. Let's go a little farther into the timeline and let's add another one. A really common marker to put in is a uh, verse one. So let's add a marker and we'll call it V1 for verse one. Now let's go a little farther and another common marker that you're gonna put down a lot is chorus one. So let's add another marker, and we'll call it C1 for Chorus 1. So now we have four markers within this area. Another really convenient thing with uh, markers in Logic 
is being able to go between markers using the number pad. So let's say we wanted to go to the end. All we have to do is count which marker it is. So one, two, three, four. So if we hit number four on the number pad, it'll go to the end. So I'm gonna hit three and it goes to this marker. If I hit two, it goes to verse one and one, I'm back to the start. The last thing I'm gonna show in this tutorial is what's called the marquee ruler. We go to view and go to marquee ruler and you can see it opens up a new spot between the bars and the markers. Now if you select anywhere inside of that, you select all the tracks that you have in your project, even if they're all selected or just one selected. It will grab all of your tracks within your project. This becomes really important later on when you're when you have, you're in the middle of your project and you're rearranging and copying and pasting verses, choruses everywhere and trying to make an arrangement with all your tracks. We'll get into this a lot deeper later on, but uh, we're here on the ruler right now, so it's nice to know that it's there. And that was everything that I wanted to go over on this tutorial, so see you next tutorial.